Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Remember, you can catch us all the time online or on your favorite podcast aggregator, also on YouTube and on fine stations across California. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to questions at insurancehour.com. You can also dial pound 250 on your cell phone, use keyword insurance, and you'll get connected to an agent right away. Today we are off site and we are sitting and having a conversation with the infamous Dennis Beaver, who we've had on the show before and we all had a great time. Dennis, welcome. Glad to be here. It's funny. I'm welcoming him and he's glad to be here. This is his office, I've come to him. Today we're going to sit, we were having a sit down in Dennis's office, which I, I, I have to tell you, I feel, I'm feeling smarter just sitting amongst all these books. And we're going to talk a little bit about the law and how it pertains to insurance and some red flags potentially that consumers should be on the lookout for. So the idea is we know that there's insurance in the world, we know there's lawyers in the world and they, in some ways interact. And Dennis is going to go over some things to pay attention to in general and when it pertains to insurance. So Dennis, before we go further, tell me a little bit about your experience. So you're speaking from the perspective of doing what? Oh. Yeah, I've been in pri private practice now since 1970, what, 76? And I'll be actually beyond that. Um, primarily handling civil litigation, a lot of personal injury, uh, I lived in divorce court for 30 years. So that's the key, apparently. You just have to be in divorce court during the day, to be, <laughs> and that keeps you at home married with God. Okay. Yeah, you, you learn a lot about what creates a divorce from handling divorces. I'm sure. You know? and, and actually, the, the, the origin of a divorce is poor dating habits, hmm. not knowing each other long enough, you know, getting too romantic, too soon romantically involved before you establish a friendship. Hmm. Because if you have a foundation of friendship in a, in a marriage, you can survive just about anything. If you don't, you can survive nothing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, well, you obviously, you're speaking from <laughs> your living proof. I am among the luckiest husbands on the planet, I will tell you. That's terrific. So uh, in our practice, we've had a lot of, handled a lot of personal injury cases, a ton of litigation, and personal injury changed significantly from when I began doing this, handling auto accident cases. At one time, you could say, okay, if you were rear-ended, you see a doctor, you get your medical bills paid, your wages paid, and typically you would multiply your medical bills by three times, and that's a settlement. That was kind of a rule of thumb. So medical bills, regardless of what the accident was or what happened? Within, within reason, obviously. I, well, that changed years ago when the insurance companies began using formulas and programs to calculate what a case would be worth. And the dollar value was shrunk like mad. And I began doing this well before there were TV ads all over the place like we see today for, you know, if you were an auto accident, call me and all, all this stuff. Uh, uh, we call the billboard lawyers, or also called ambulance chasers, and it's huge business. It's, it's a multi-billion dollar business. When you see these ads on television, these don't come cheap. So the, uh, the, the reality is you get involved in a wreck, your fault, somebody else's fault, you see the ad on TV, you call 1-800, you know, I'll sue for you, whatever. They dispatch an investigator, it might even be a secretary, who will take down the information and sign you up. On the spot? On the spot, typically. And is that legal to have someone that's yeah, not, they, not an attorney no, do not that? Doesn't okay. have to be a lawyer, no. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll sign up anybody, everybody. And the, the truth is that these law firms are mills. They're set personal injury mills. Seldom will they ever try a case. Mm. Anything that has significant value or they can't handle, they'll farm out to some other law firm. So they're trying to quickly turn these cases into settlements. 
But the problem, this is, if, and this affects, of course, our, you know, our, our viewers, our listeners, is that they want to bump up the medical bills, the treatment. So the, Wait, so you're saying that some of these law firms will try and get the doctors to charge more, or are they sending them to doctors they don't need? Or? Sending you often to doctors you don't need. Oh, boy. And often, even before liability has been established. So let's say you have medical payments coverage, $10,000 as an average. Um, they will work with chiropractors, with physical therapists, some of whom are very competent, very good. Others just see a kachink on a cash register. And so they immediately try to max out payments under the med pay. Well, what happens if the chiropractor can't fix you? If it's something more than that, that you need, you need medical treatment or maybe surgery, right? Or lengthy physical therapy. And now after a few months, the medical pay has been maxed out. And they haven't even properly investigated the case. So you're saying that there's the possibility that they're going to get signed up with a law firm and they're going to start getting medical care before there's even the determination if they were at fault or not? Often, even before there's a police report, they will send you out wow. to one of their doctors. Now, let's hope you're not at fault, right? But how much damage did your car sustain? If it's a low-impact uh, accident, you know, a true fender bender, you know, or just a few hundred bucks, you know, a bent bumper or something, uh, most insurance companies are not going to accept significant medical bills, if any, if any. So they're saying if there's not a lot of damage to the car, how much damage could there be to the occupant? That's, that's correct. Now, so, now, chiropractors would tell you, oh, yes, there can still be all kinds of damage, the physics of this, physics you, of that. You sound like a little skeptical of that. I am. Because, you know, seeing this for many, many years, you realize that um, there usually is a correlation between car damage and people damage. So now they have sent you out and they run up a huge bill. And lo and behold, we discover, uh-oh, the witnesses say, it was your fault. Bye-bye. So here you are. Now, you may be seeing other doctors. You may have had an MRI conducted. You may have expensive medical tests done that you don't have insurance for. The accident was your fault. And they've cut you loose. Who's going to pay the bills? You will, baby. So you mean that the firm can actually, I need to back up. So we're, all of this can happen before the consumer is even is treated, before the consumer is healed, before the consumers fall, all of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's get into that in a little more detail. Sure. We'll take a quick break, and I want to dive into that a little bit more. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Gray. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. Carl Sussman with Insurance Hour. We are back. If you missed any part of the show, remember you can catch it on YouTube. You can catch it as a podcast. You can find us pretty much everywhere. Before the break, we were talking with a special guest, Dennis Beaver, about some issues that might happen when you're obtaining an attorney to represent you after an accident. And we were just talking about the potential person who is in an accident, who immediately signs up with an attorney, and what happens from that stage forward. Let's just jump Yeah, in. we're talking about auto accident mills, right? That just, just churn these cases, they'll sign up anything, they don't care from the outset about liability, who's at fault, they'll sign you up. And the difficulty is, just to, re just to review a little bit what we talked about, is that let's say you have medical payments insurance on your car. 
but there's been no determination yet of fault. If it's the other side's fault, number one, do they have insurance? Do you have limits, appropriate limits, uninsured motorist, which you should have at least in the amount of 25,000, 50,000, at least, right? But before that's been determined, many of these, you see the ads on TV all over the place, you know, uh, under the banner of, and it's used all over the country, We'll fight like hell for our lawyers, for for our clients, right? Maybe uh, was that a slip of the tongue, or maybe yeah. a little bit of truth in that? We'll I think. fight with our lawyers, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they will send you out to their doctors, yeah, to their doctors, mm -hmm. uh, who may or may not be competent, but frequently they want to max out the med pay, so the low hanging fruit, the low hanging fruit, so. What if it is your fault, you don't have a lot of insurance, and now you've been sent here and here and here, and you're looking at $50,000 in medical bills that haven't been paid. So before you agree to expensive treatment, you want to make sure these lawyers have determined liability. Yeah, if you're hurting, I agree. Certainly go to you know emergency room or see a chiropractor, but don't run the risk of running up some massive bill. So if you're going to a law firm and the law firm says, all right, we're representing you now. We want you to go to this doctor or this chiropractor or whatever, and all of these expenses get run up, and then it's determined that you're, you're at fault, let's say, what does the law firm do at that point? They abandon you. They can do that? Absolutely. Wow, we couldn't help you because it was determined that it was your fault. Goodbye. They cut you loose on a raft in the middle of the Pacific. Literally, and I see it happen all the time. So you want to make sure that before you incur expenses that you have to pay for if there's no insurance coverage, if there's no recovery from the other side. Is there liability? Is there a means of paying for these things? Don't just accept all this, all this treatment thinking that, well, the more treatment you have, the higher the settlement we're going to get you. Maybe it'll work out that way. Maybe you'll be stuck with it. And I have come across some of the biggest advertisers on TV that have settled cases and not paid the bills. So this is one how of the... Did, how does that... You're saying that they settle the case, but they don't pay the medical bills? They do not. They do not pay all the medical bills. They just ignored... Uh, they missed them. And, the, and, the, and the, their client reads my newspaper column or in the gun Kiplinger and said, Hey, Beaver, can you help me? So I, I look into it and realize, holy cow, they just completely blew it. The first thing you want to take care of is making sure the bills are covered, which is one reason, folks, why you want to stay local if you possibly can. All right, You want to hire a local attorney in your town if you can. Don't be seduced by these people on TV unless it's a local law firm and you know where they're located. You can go right down to their office because... You'll never meet the guy on TV, you know, who claims to be an expert in parachuting or whatever, right? Uh, you'll never talk to that person. Over the years, I have spoken to lawyers and paralegals in their offices that have jumped ship saying, hey, Beeve, you, you, be, you go crazy saying what goes on here. We don't pay bills. We don't investigate claims. When we do and we discover our client was at fault, we cut them loose and they're facing huge bills. I had no idea that that was possible. This is one of those things that sounds like, how is that legal? I assume that somewhere in the retainer the agreement that the client signs, it says that the law firm can leave. Is, there, is yes. the language usually for any reason or is it based on fault or the client, can they look for something? The, the lawyer has a right to leave for any reason. They don't, they shouldn't leave you high and dry where you're in trouble. But if they conclude there's no case here, they can say, sorry, we looked into it. You're at fault. We can't prove this. Or well, there's not enough damages for us to justify going further with it. Wow. So this is why you've got to be so careful, ladies and gentlemen, who you hire to represent you. Number one, if it's a fender bender, if it's just a little, you know, you, it's a bump in your car, you know, have some common sense. Don't think, ah, oh, great, I'm an auto accident. You know, rub your hands together, insurance claim. Don't work that way. Because if you do... It'll come back to bite you on the nose. Insurance is not meant to enrich you. It's meant to compensate for actual damage or, or, or property damage and, or injury. So this is, an, this is a huge 
issue. If you look at all the ads on TV, and these are expensive ads, and some of them are very well done. I notice them when I happen to be home sick during the weekday. They tend to be the every other commercial. Every other commercial. Be, yeah. I think two of them are, two of the, uh, the I've got to interview these two guys, the Law Brothers are called, and they're on big guys on top of trucks, and I've got to talk to them because they're hysterical. The others are uh, irritating, you know, particularly the ones, yeah, we'll fight for you, right? The reality is that most cases don't wind up in court, that you want a lawyer who can negotiate a settlement, right, who does not view the adjuster as the enemy. Some are, but most are not. Most want to pay a, an appropriate claim, but they're not any idiots. So they look, look, look at something and say, this is overtreated. I'm not going to respect that stuff. So you're saying that a client that, that shouldn't take the attorney's medical advice blindly. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and make sure before you agree to get into expensive treatment that liability has been established. There's a way of paying for the bills. And so... In the meantime, is there, what, what I want to find out, I guess, is maybe even back up a little bit, and, and we can do this after the break, we can come back to it. But what I want to talk about also is when you've had that accident, maybe it's the small accident like you're talking about that's just a fender bender or something minor, right? When you get out of the car more angry than hurt. I, I use that sort of as the determining factor, right? Sure. If you're feeling more anger than pain, it probably falls in that category. Yeah. What is the What is the best way for you to then determine at that moment, or, or shortly thereafter, whether you should look for representation versus should you just contact the other person's insurance company or, or, or go through what is the non-legal channel. We're going to take a quick break, but I want to have your thoughts because it's hard for people when they're in an accident and they're uncomfortable, they're in uncharted territories. Yeah. I want you to give your best advice for what they should do to determine whether they should be seeking assistance from an attorney or not. Sure. We'll talk about that with Dennis right after the break. In today's uncertain times, navigating the California insurance marketplace can feel like a journey through uncharted waters. That's where Sussman Insurance Agency steps in, guiding you with the wisdom of experience and the care of family. We at Sussman Insurance Agency understand the complexities of finding the right coverage in these challenging times. With decades of expertise and a heritage spanning two generations, we're more than just insurance agents. We are your trusted advisors, your navigators in the sea of insurance options. Treating our clients like family isn't just a phrase, it's our commitment. We listen, we understand, and we provide solutions tailored to your unique needs. Why? Because to us, you're a part of the Sussman family. Don't let the tides of uncertainty sway you. Anchor your trust in Sussman Insurance Agency. Call us today at 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com. Have specific questions? Drop us an email at sales at sussmaninsurance.com. At Sussman Insurance Agency, we're not just in the business of policies. We're in the business of peace of mind. Sussman Insurance Agency, navigating your insurance life together. Hello, hello, welcome back. This is Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. We are here with special guest, Dennis Beaver, and we are talking about insurance claims and attorneys, when to use them, when not to, what to look out for, what are those red flags, potentially. If you've missed any part of this show, be sure to go back and catch the rest of it. You can find it on any podcast app you like. You can find it on YouTube. And remember, if you have questions specifically, you can email questions at insurancehour.com or dial pound 250, use keyword insurance, you know, get through to somebody right away. So Dennis, we were talking right before the break about what happens and when to determine what, how to help a consumer make the decision after an accident, whether they should just move forward with the insurance carrier mm -hmm. or whether they need to get representation. Walk us through that thinking and how people should be looking at that. Yeah, if it's really a major accident, right, where, you, where you know, you've been hospitalized, broken bones, and it's really bad, you certainly need a lawyer. And there's no question about that, right? But the, the quote, typical minor fender bender, where, yeah, you hurt a bit, you may require some treatment. So what you should do, first of all, is, number one, you get a, you, you get a, you get a copy of the police report. Hopefully there's going to be a police report. And hopefully there'll be you know, the information for the other side's insurance company. And you contact them. Most reputable companies will sign an adjuster and they'll, and they'll work with you. Some are jerks. They'll ignore you. If that happens, you contact your own company. All right. So I got a call a couple days ago from a woman. I didn't know if she was crying on the phone or if she had a sore throat. Mr. Beaver, Mr. Beaver, I was asking 
Couldn't understand what she's saying. Ma'am, are you crying? Oh, that is bad sore throat. <laughs> bad sore throat. <laughs> Auto accident and the other sides and the carrier won't return her phone calls. So this is a stage where she was in an accident. Mm -hmm. She did not get an attorney. She's just trying to work directly That's with the insurance correct. carrier. And they're not responding That's to her. So I said, do, okay. you, do you have auto insurance? Yeah, do you have full coverage, medical pay and this and that? Yes, I do. Call your company. Let them take care of it. If it's not your fault, you know, that, that's what you have insurance for. Don't be afraid of, use, of, quote, using your insurance because that's what you have it, right? Right, and people might be concerned about doing that because they're concerned about their rates going up. But yeah. there's issues of subrogation, which we can talk about at another time. Sure. But so tell us, you're saying the general rule is if you're in the hospital... You probably want an attorney, and if not, you should at least start out by trying to Yeah, if, if you're not, you know, honestly, badly hurt, you know, we haven't got fractures and all kinds of stuff like that, you should probably try working with the claims adjusters on the other side, your insurance company as well. And again, I want to, I want to um, reinforce this comment. Stay local. Try to hire a lawyer in your town. Why is that important? Well, first of all, local lawyers have a reputation to defend, right? People look them up, you know, on Yelp or whatever it might be, and if the comments are are, are good, you don't have negative negative comments. People will go to that to that to that lawyer, but they're more inclined to want to help local people because they're a greater greater source of referrals, obviously, right? Uh, don't just jump. Oh, I saw eight hundred, you know, call us online. Out outcomes. Smiley with his retainer agreement, uh, and you he, may, he's not bitter at all. Just so you know, he's really not. <laughs> yeah. And so many of these firms are absolute scams, and I see them. You know, um, I've spoken to lawyers who have worked in their offices, not even left not being paid. They were just, just couldn't believe it how you know how, how slimy it was. So if you could stay local, stay local especially if it's a major case, especially if, God forbid, somebody got killed or something of that nature. You want someone in your town. You don't want to go to these, these, these advertising or billboard lawyers. You don't want that at all, right? Because they don't, they don't litigate. They farm it out to some other law firm. They want to quickly settle the case. And they will settle it, in my experience. Not all, mind you, of course. But in my experience, they will often settle them for a fraction of what the case is worth. Just to, just to turn the case. Just to, Do you think that in those, in those cases, it's likely that had they not, got, they had not retained someone, they might have actually ended up with more money? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure. So it's not only a matter of what could happen if it ends up not being a, a case that they can continue, but even in the event that they settle the case, which is what everyone hopes for, a quick settlement and, and, and money, you're saying that it's possible that they might really end up with less than had they just done it themselves. You could wind up in the hole. You could wind up owing money, medical bills. That's the problem, right? So don't fall. They spend millions of dollars on TV, radio, right, on, on, online. Why? Because people call the number, right? It's very, it's, it's, it's very profitable, but it's not necessarily in your best interest. Are there some good firms out there? I'm sure there are. Do I know of any that I would refer you to? Hmm. No. Well, that's saying a lot because I know you've <laughs> talked to a lot of attorneys over the yeah, years. Yes, I do. Well, we're going to definitely talk about the flip side because not, not all, I suppose, we're talking about personal injury attorneys. Not, not all of them, of course, are, are this way. Sure. There are certainly some that specialize and, and that really take, the, take what they do seriously. Sure. How does somebody differentiate between a good attorney that's going to really investigate the case and do the right thing by them versus one of these, as you're calling them, one of the, these mills. You do your homework, right? You, you Google the law firm, you Google the name of the lawyer, find out do they appear in, in newspaper articles, cases they've, they've taken to trial. What kind of record do they have? Is that a good thing if they have or a bad thing? It could be a very good thing if you, if you find they've got significant awards, jury, jury verdict that says they know what they're doing, right? If you find nothing like that, and only ad advertise advertisements, maybe it's a brand new law firm, so they may, they may have no track record, right? Uh, uh, and also, don't be seduced 
by the fact that there's a local office of the, of the 1-800 ambulance chaser. It's very easy to rent an office, put somebody there. You think you're dealing with a local lawyer. You want somebody who is in your town for a long time, ideally. Uh, just don't, don't fall for, uh, you know, for these come on ads because so often they're not in your best interest. You know, we've, we've, had, we've talked a lot about what, what to look out for, right? Yeah. We've talked about the fact that there are people that spend a lot of money to advertise, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be better or worse lawyers for that part. But, sure. we, but it's an indication, right? It's a, the potential is there for someone, if they're spending money to market, that they might more, be more likely than not one of the types of firms that you're saying yes. could be problematic. But to do, your, but to do, to your, do the research first. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... Another quick break, and when we come back, I want to talk about the good experiences. When you get a knowledgeable and legitimate law firm that's going to be working with you to try and ensure that you get the best representation and the best outcome from your claim. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk with Dennis about the attorneys that you want to have. Be right back. I'm sure many small business owners out there have been hearing a lot about tax advisory, but aren't quite sure what it is or how it can help. Let Semaphore guide you and help fulfill your tax advisory needs at SemaphoreHQ.com. A tax advisor is a part-time, on-demand financial expert who can help you with scaling and tracking your financials and making smart financial decisions. How do you know if you need tax advisory? The answer depends on your stage, size, and goals. Tax advisory can help you address these issues without the cost or commitment of hiring a full-time CFO. A tax advisor can work with you on a project basis, a retainer basis, or a hybrid basis, depending on your needs and budget. If you are interested in learning more about how tax advisory can help you scale your business, please contact Semaphore today at 720-766-8869 or check us out at semaphorehq.com. That's S-E-M-A-P-H-O-R-E-H-Q.com. Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for being here. We are here with Dennis Beaver talking about the law, lawyers, and insurance claims. Remember, if you missed any part of the show, be sure to go back and catch the beginning. You don't want to miss it. There was a ton of information there. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us through any podcast app you could possibly imagine. You can find us on iHeartMedia. You name it, we're out there. If you have questions, you can send them to questions at insurancehour.com. Or you can call 559-656-0317. You either get a person or voicemail. We will get back to you. So, Dennis, before the break, we were talking about a lot of things that were not so good. Yeah. Not so flattering for some of the some of the industry. So tell me now the flip side. Tell me what how do you know when you're on the right track? What what are the help us set the expectations for what sure. someone should want? If yeah. they're going through that process. Well, what should you expect when you hire a lawyer? Right. right? So just say so you're involved in an auto accident, there were some significant injuries, and you hire a local lawyer. Right. So when you call that law firm, you should be able to speak either to that lawyer or to his or her paralegal or assistant. If you deal with these huge major 1-800 call me firms, you'll never talk with a guy on TV. Ever. Ever. You'll be lucky if you talk with anybody who has a, a, a notion about your case. So you, deal, you, you keep local with a, with a local competent lawyer. He or she will call you back or their assistant will call you back. They will have you into their office for an in-depth in interview. If it looks like it may get litigated, they'll sit down with you and prepare you for a deposition. They'll review medical bills with you. They'll want you to keep apprised of how the treatment is coming. They will always be happy to meet with you at all times, right? and they maintain an ongoing relationship with you and with, the, and with the, the people who are treating you. The ambulance chasers, I'll, I'll use the term, you don't hear from them. You call and nobody calls you back. They don't know anything, anything about your case. So you, you need someone so it's local and it's very personal. What can somebody do if they've already entered into an agreement with a law firm and they're not getting the type of response that you're talking about? Are there repercussions or things they can do at that stage? It is possible to change lawyers. In the middle? Well, this is the problem. It depends on how much they've gotten into it, right? So if they've done a whole bunch of work, normally their retainer agreement will say, 
uh, if we are subbed out, if someone signs a new, a new retainer agreement replaces us with somebody else, we get paid at the rate of so much an hour. So you darn well be, better be sure if you're going to get out of that relationship, you do it quickly. If not, you're going to have two lawyers to pay. Now, you can't pay twice for the whole fee, um, but you need to know what are they doing uh, and, and keep careful records. Are they returning your phone call? Keep a ledger. I called on this date. I left for it. Nobody called me back. I called again. Nobody called me back. This is great advice. We talk about this during claims in general, that it's always important to try and speak, to, to try to take really good notes, because... When you find yourself in a bad situation, you'll start wishing you had better documentation to be able to put together the specifics of what went wrong. And right. it's, it's hard in hindsight. So if, as a general practice, keeping good notes is always a good thing to do. Sure. So if you're in a situation where maybe you've just retained a law firm and you're starting to see these red flags, they're, they're not calling you back, they don't want to meet with you in person, or maybe you're realizing that maybe this just isn't the right firm, is it possible to speak with them and, and tell them these things, give them a chance to modify how they're working, or, or what would you recommend? Yeah, you, you could certainly do that, or, or, or uh, this is why before you hire them, go online. Look at the Better Business Bureau reviews. Now, the Better Business Bureau, I pay, play, place no faith in the Better Business Bureau, all right? Hmm. However, that? however, complaints about various companies or professions, they, they publish. So if you see a bunch of complaints about a, a law firm or any company, definitely read that before you sign up with them. That's a good insight. Or if what's happening to you has happened to other people, then, you know, I would say definitely and don't, don't wait months because the longer you wait, they're going to be further and further in, into, your, into your wallet. Is it possible if you're with a firm and, they, and you get to that point where they say, sorry, there's no case, and they leave? You, and I assume at that point you don't owe them money, but you may owe medical bills and things yes. of that nature. So if you at that point decide you want to go to a different law firm, is that possible? Sure it is, if, if, if they'll take you, right? Because, you know, why did they dump you? Did they determine they, there's no liability? It, was the, it was, wasn't the other guy's fault, it was your fault. Very often... You know, three people see an accident and they get three different versions. You know, we don't necessarily know what really happened, right? So, um, and police reports can be wrong. Witnesses can say, no, it didn't happen that way. So that's why you want proper, a proper investigation unless the other side says, we accept responsibility. And that's something, if they accept responsibility right up front, is there any advantage to being with a law firm that, is less, I say, aggressive, is, is less aggressive with billing and sending to doctors versus one that's sending you for what seems like more conservative treatment? You ultimately want, you, you want the treatment that, that is needed and is appropriate. You don't want someone who says, well, hey, just listen to me, I'll bump up those bills and you'll get more money. If you hear anything like that or get that kind of a feeling, get out of there or you can reject treatment or physical therapy or things you don't need. You've got to be delicate in doing it, right? Because there are a lot of uh, healthcare workers that are hand in glove with chiropractors that want to just bump up bills. Hmm. So it's all. So you're saying that if you're getting referred to a lot of doctors and treatment that you don't see that doesn't seem appropriate, that's a big red that's flag. That's a big red flag. It's a huge red flag. Well, that seems like something you would find out relatively quickly, right? Because if it's the type of firm that's trying to increase your bills, they would probably sure. try and do it quickly. And all, this is why, again, you want to research that firm online. See, what, go, go to the Better Business Bureau, reviews and comments, complaints from, from people about any company that it might be. Be wary of an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. It's meaningless. So how is the rating meaningless, but, you, but there's so much weight you put in the negative reviews? Yeah. Okay. They, they don't base their rating, a grade, on reviews. They, they contend they, they figure complaints into the reviews. But if, you pay, if you're a paid member, you then become an accredited member of the Better Business Bureau, which is nonsense. It means you've been in business for like a year, and you promise to be honest. The implication, which is why... Accreditation by the Better Business Bureau. Oh, what do you mean they're not accredited? That's not good. 
No, it, it, the implication is there's something wrong with you because you're not accredited. It means you didn't pay to become a member. I see. So it's I, so. or or there was a complaint, a thousand complaints. Oh, hang on. I want I want to hear about what to do with the thousand complaint person. Let's take a quick break and we'll talk sure, about that. Sure. Be right back. We all love children, and many of us have an old car, truck, or van in the driveway. Find the Children has a great way for you to put your unwanted vehicle to good use. Keep listening. Every year, thousands of kids go missing. Trust me, it's a parent's worst nightmare. When a child goes missing, every moment counts, and you need all of the help you can get. Find the Children is a nonprofit organization dedicated to locating missing children and bringing them home safely. You can help support their mission by donating your car, truck, van, or SUV. A towing company will come and pick up your car for free, running or not, and the donation of your car is tax deductible. Your help is providing the funds they need to continue their services. Call now, donate your old vehicle to find the children and get free pickup. Here's the number. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. 800-403-6517. That's 800-403-6517. Hello, hello, Carl Sussman here. You are listening to Insurance Hour. I am here talking with special guest Dennis Beaver. We were just talking about doing research on an attorney before you hire them after a potential accident. And he mentioned something about what to do if you're researching somebody or a law firm and they have a thousand potential complaints, which I think he was being funny. But tell us, what, what is the, other than the obvious, when you're seeing that number of complaints, yeah, what does that tell yeah, you? Let me give you an example and bring this back to the Better Business Bureau, okay? If you Google Dennis Beaver Kiplinger, the Kiplinger publication, foreign language. I wrote an article recently on learning a language. You all heard the commercials from Rosetta Stone Babel, right? He had an article on this. Now, Better Business Bureau gives Rosetta Stone uh, an A plus and Babel an F. Yet the complaints of which there are hundreds all over the internet and, and tons of them on the Better Business Bureau sites for both Babel and Rosetta Stone, the same scam, fraud, it doesn't work. Why did they give one an A plus, the other an F? Why? Because, oh, as the media person wrote back to me, oh, Rosetta Stone answered us when we wrote them. But the underlying complaint's the same. So they give you an A plus because they answered, right? Ox, care, ox car care are advertising like crazy on, on radio. A plus by the Better Business Bureau. There are a bazillion complaints all over the internet about them and on the Better Business Bureau. A plus, right? You cannot trust their ratings. So back to research, right? You, before you hire anybody, whoever it might be, you want to look them up, see what you can come up with. Is it reasonable that based on your research to turn around and have a conversation with them and say, you know, I'm looking to retain you. However, I'm, I'm reading about X, Y, and Z. They, they'll lie to you. Really? Oh, it's, oh we, 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 anybody can be upset, they'll tell you, right? When you find all on various various sites all over the internet the same kind of stupid comments, stay away from them. What about where are some other places to go other than the better better business? But does does the, uh, so the state, state bar have state bar? You look up a lawyer at the state bar; it'll show discipline. And was that person disciplined? Did they get in trouble with ethical violation? That that would that that would show up, right? Um, so you put their name in there. Maybe maybe put scam put incompetent, uh, doesn't return, return phone calls, language like that in Google, hit enter, see what comes up, right? Um, remember, folks, that you really can't trust reviews. You cannot trust reviews. Why? You can buy reviews. I can pay for reviews, good or bad. Yes, I'll be doing an article on that soon. You can pay pennies on the dollar for a, a phony review that says you're wonderful and and they get placed all over the place well if you can't trust the reviews who can you trust yeah where where is the most reliable you, place to go you go back 75 years and you talk to your friends who have hired a lawyer or a doctor word of mouth referral referral right because anybody can say anything online 
So I, I guess the best place to go is not based on what you see or, or what's thrown at you to potentially get TV, radio, anything, print. Yeah, yeah. But the best type of attorney to start with, if you can, is to find one that has you have personal experience with via some friend or That's family. Right. That's right. That's you right. Know, and be very leery of, you know, of ABC lawyer got me a million dollars. Well, they don't show you he's in a wheelchair. You know, he's got no legs. There are, there, there, there's just so much nonsense out there. Uh, and this has impacted uh, the notion that an auto accident means you're going to get oodles of money from the insurance company has impacted rates that we all pay. And I think that it has certainly uh, lowered the already low uh, opinion that people have of, of, the, of the legal profession. Talk to me a little bit about that. How, how does that work? Because people have, I've heard, the impression that that when you get money from an insurance company, it's a, it's, it's a payback. You know, you've been paying premium, you're entitled to get your money back, regardless of, of any of these things. And that's, insurance is to compensate for a loss. You didn't win the lottery, right? And my advice is if you have a, something happens to your house, you know, a couple of thousand dollars you can afford to pay for it, pay for it out of your own pocket, because carriers will raise rates if they're given an opportunity. Don't flag something and bring something to their attention. Uh, if it's a big event, that's a different story, right? So something you can handle on your own that's not a major financial hit, handle it on your own if you can. You make a claim when you really need to make a claim. And how does that impact everyone else? How does your behavior or your neighbor's behavior, your friend's behavior, and their propensity to file a claim or get an attorney, how, does that have an impact on everyone else's premium, like mine? Sure it does. Sure. The more, you know, the, the more um, frivolous claims you have, the more time insurance companies pay dealing with this kind of stuff. They, you know, they're not in the business, they're not, not in a charity business. So there's no question this is going to have an impact upon rates. So it's not even just that you're potentially going to have your rate increase. The overall rates that everyone pays goes up. What is the expression about uh, high tide raises all ships? Yes. So every, I love that expression. I'm glad I remembered it. <laughs> so your actions really do impact everybody's premium. Sure. So the, sure. general, the general societal propensity to file a claim, if it's higher, then generally speaking, we would expect to see higher rates. And if it's lower, we would generally see lower rates. Yeah, all things being equal, right? You have inflation, all kinds of other sure. issues. But, but, you know, don't view insurance as a giant, ah, had an accident, could chink on the cash register, I get the cash in. If you do, and particularly if you fudge a, cl a claim, if they, they prove that you, you lied or distorted one aspect of a claim, they can deny the entire claim. So it's not worth it, folks. Be honest in all things, in making an insurance claim, and if you don't have to, don't do it. But finally, stay local. If you can hire a local attorney to handle your matter, do. Stay away, from, unless it's a local guy on TV or gal, stay away from these big advertisers. In my experience, they're not your friend. I'm getting a pattern here for local. Dennis likes local folk, because that you can walk in, sit yep. down, and talk to them. And I know that's difficult, especially these days, because we're used to transacting things online, over the phone, over email. I know in the insurance business, uh, the number of people that we have that actually come into the office versus the number of clients that will just email or, or text even. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's gone from people want to come in to people want to call, to people want to email, to people want to text. And, and now it's to some extent, they don't even want that. They just want everything to be automated. You know, everything should just happen magically. You know, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, I wanna talk a little bit more about what you just said about fudging a little bit, right? And, and how you might have a legitimate claim, but if you're not 100% accurate in your reporting, that could come back to haunt you. We'll talk about that as soon as we come back. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, in just a few moments, the window to the Magic Podcast Show will begin. My name is Patrick. My name is Calvin. I'm Mouseketeer Greg. My name is Paul, and I will be your guide through the wonderful world of Disney sound experiences. 
This show is a weekly trip into the world of the Disney theme parks and resorts. And this is the place where you get to use your ears to surround yourself with the magic. For your safety, please remain seated while listening to the windowtothemagic.com podcast. Maybe there's a name for this. Something like Disnotic Obsession. Please visit windowtothemagic.com for more information, or you can find us on Apple Podcasts and in the iHeartMedia app. Hello, hello. Carl Sussman here. This is Insurance Hour. Thank you so much for being here. We're in our final segment. Remember, if you've missed any of this, you definitely want to go back and find the beginning. You can find us on any type of podcast app. You can find us on iHeartMedia. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us all over. Just search for Insurance Hour. We are speaking with Dennis Beaver, and we're talking about insurance and the law. And before the break, we were talking, and Dennis said something that struck a nerve with me, and I want to go over that. You mentioned that there could be negative repercussions if you pad a claim, or sometimes it's called fill the deductible, or, or something along those lines. Explain what that means and what the ramifications yeah, are. Ultimately, if you exaggerate a claim, if you lie on a claim, right? And that's discovered. If, if it's something significant and that is discovered, the insurance company can deny the entire claim. And they will. And I've had this happen to, to clients of mine. I, make, I always say, when we're handling property damage, don't make things up. Don't say something was in the car that it wasn't in the car. We see that oddly sometimes. The, the joke is that when someone has their car broken into, it happens to be the day they were just at the dry cleaner. They had just picked up their new laptop. Sure. They had just, you know, taken money out of the safety deposit box and the jewelry too. It, it's a strange set of circumstances. But so you're saying that if someone has a legitimate claim, let's take a break into the car since that happens, right? First, we know that things taken from the car are not going to be covered under the auto policy. They would be covered under a property insurance policy, right? So let's just say someone has their car broken into and they, and they had, I don't know, their purse stolen. And, you know, they can prove that, obviously. They have to cancel credit cards, things like that. But at the same time, they say, hmm, I have a deductible. I'll say that my, you know, uh, I had my jewelry on that day and I had left it in the car when I went to play tennis or something. You're saying that by simply adding an item that wasn't there, if, they're, if, if that's proven to be false, they can deny not only that item, but the whole claim? They can deny the entire claim. And, and I wrote a story about that not too long ago of a lady who called up and said that her work vehicle was parked in front of her office. We talked about this. Yeah. You have to hear this story. Yeah. In the vehicle was her purse, the keys to the, to the, to the vehicle, claimed she had $2,000 to pay her employees. I said, uh, you, you took out deductions for taxes. And the, oh, no, I, these are people I hire at Home Depot. <laughs> and she was uh, upset because she had a GPS tracking device in the car. They stole the car and would, drove away with it. She was angry that the GPS wasn't working because it had it been working, the police would have found the vehicle. And I said, ma'am, number one, I don't believe you. <laughs> number two, all GPS contracts omit coverage for contents in the vehicle. So if it's working or not, they're not going to reimburse you for the contents on the, in, the, in, the, in the vehicle. And she was really angry. Mr. Beaver, you're supposed to lie, lie, lie crazy for your client. That's what you're supposed to do, she says. She told you that you're supposed oh, to yeah. lie for your client? You're supposed to believe and lie for me if necessary. Oh, yeah? It's yeah. an interesting point right there. Yeah. So <laughs> as a means, as a, you know, and we're going to deviate for a second because now I'm intrigued. I guess in theory, you could represent whatever your client says. But in this case, you straight out told the person you didn't believe them. That's right. So I would, I would say that it's probably a good sign if you're speaking with an attorney and they seem skeptical of what you're saying, true or not, because that probably means they're a little more ethical. A lawyer should not participate in a fraudulent act. It's, it's a crime, you know? You can't call up a lawyer. It's happened with the Me Too, you know, Me Too is a big deal. I'd so, so many people read, me, read my column, they say, well, Mr. Beer, thinking they have an attorney-client privilege, they can tell me anything, right? <laughs> you don't establish an attorney-client privilege just by a phone call. Well, this didn't really happen, Mr. Beaver, but I was working for a guy, I've been gone a couple of years, I, I want to say that, you know, he was sexually harassing me, and 
I know they got plenty of money. Can we, we work together and get some money? I said, well, who, who is the guy? I get all kinds of information, who he was, the phone number, where the office is. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. I said, ma'am, guess what? You don't establish an attorney-client privilege by just calling me. Number two, guess who I'm going to call <laughs> when we hang up? You can't call a lawyer and ask that lawyer to be a co-conspirator of yours to commit theft. And I hear, ah, at the other end, literally gasp, and I called the other, the, the former employer. Said, you put them on alert. Ah, I give you a heads up. You know, I got several calls like that. Really? Yeah, Me Too was, had many valid points to Me Too, okay? But it, it opened the door to all kinds of bogus claims. Fascinating. Yeah. So people will call you straight out and ask you to lie. And they think they've established an attorney-client privilege. They can say anything to me, and I can't reveal it. And so to be clear, just for anyone that's not sure, attorney-client privilege means that you can't, you, can't turn, you can't repeat what they've said to I, someone else. I can't reveal the confidence. Correct. What happens if they have retained you and you do have privilege with them, and then they're asking you or they're saying things that they want you to do that are untrue? Goodbye. You'll let them I, I fire them. That's the end of it. Again, something to look for. A little bit of honesty, a lot of integrity. Hey, it took too long to, to go through years of college and law school to become an attorney and over a few dollars to, to lose that, right? Well, you're a man of integrity. I've known that forever. And, you know, as, as we're coming up on the last couple of months of the show, I just, again, I want to thank you so much for, for all that you do. If you're not aware... You can call this man of all these years of experience, and, and every time we get together, I hear him on the phone putting things together for people. And how much do you charge an hour now? Anybody, any reader who calls me, zero. Why? Because number, two reasons. Number one, if I charged, then no publication would carry me because they, they, they would view this as a, my column as, a, as an advertisement. Number two, I make it a story. And I get tons of stories that way from people who call up with problems. If I can help, I'm happy to. Uh, and I've done this for many, many years. I've got a great deal of satisfaction, as corny as it sounds. It doesn't sound corny. It sounds nice for a change, right? To imagine that you're doing, that you're doing something because you enjoy it and because you know intrinsically you are helping people. Sure. And uh, I, I always like to poke him with that. So what's your hourly charge to with people that find you? <laughs> and he always laughs at me. So, you know... Again, your, your column is on Kiplinger.com. Yeah, just, just Google Dennis Beaver Kiplinger or Dennis Beaver Kiplinger, K-I-P-L-I-N-G-E-R. It's in the dot, dot .com version. Uh, the column is called You and the Law. So Google Dennis Beaver, You and the Law. It'll take you to my website, which gathers all of the articles, as well as several California papers that publish it weekly. And, I'll, and one more point he has to tell you. Watch this. Dennis, how many years have you been writing a column every single week? Over 38. Years. That's close to 2,000 columns. The man can write. <laughs> the man can write. Dennis, it is such a pleasure always to be here with you and to talk and to, and to get some wisdom from you. I, I really appreciate this. And I know that a lot of this information is useful. And again, this is not meant to be a, a negative uh, um, outlook on certain people and certain types of a profession in law. But these are things to pay attention to because, to your point, they do impact not only you, but they impact other people as well. So with that, I will say thank you so much for watching, and we'll speak with you again, and hopefully we'll be together Absolutely. again. Absolutely. And thanks for watching, folks. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 Six five six zero three one seven. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.